Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you a lead generation tool that I have created using N10. So if you don't know N10, it's an automation platform that helps you build AI workflows. Okay. You can build simple workflows, you can build agentic workflows, you can build different types of workflow uh, using N10. And uh, if you look at here on my screen, this is what I have created. It's called lead discovery engine. So basically it's a lead funnel for your team. If you are working in marketing or a sales team, you know, you will probably be doing a lot of deep research and crawling and scrapping information using different tools like SEMRAS or so on and so forth, right? Uh, you know, you go on Crunchbase, you go on Traction, CB Insights, and a lot of other data repositories or sources where you go and extract some kind of information, or you just, you know, use these paid services to kind of, you know, perform the task for you. So uh, it's like a lead magnet. You can call it a scouting tool, lead magnet thing tool, lead funnel tool, what, whatever, right? So if you look at here, I have some uh, parameters, and this is really configurable in a way. Uh, you know, it, it calls Cortex Scout, Agentic Lead Discovery Engine. You know, I, you know, you kind of give your keywords, like what kind of company you want to kind of generate your leads from, right? So if you look at here, we have a keywords, we have region, we have Na uh, NAX code, N-A-I-C-S code, which is the industry code to find out information, revenue and employees and so on and so forth. And it gives you this output uh, in JSON format. And, you know, it also gives you a you know, tabular view. Right, the top AI companies, you know, having billion dollar plus revenue and so on and so forth. Right. And if you look at United Health Group, they work in life insurance industries and so on and so forth. Sencora over here, if you look at this Macation, Exxon Mobil, and all of other companies right here. It gives you company summary, their current AI use. It also gives you what kind of current AI use, their digital signals. You know, if you go on their LinkedIn, is there any news available? You know, the, the jobs that they have posted, the tools, etc., and their readiness score. One means that they are ready. So that's how it works. Now you can download JSON, download XLSX, etc. And this is really a configurable tool. Now the question is that where is N10? See, most of the people are just working on N10 workflows right but how do we use that workflow within an interface like a mobile application or a web application or use that than let's say a serverless endpoint or so on and so forth right how do we do that so i have been using n only for this but then i have you know i've been using that n through a webhook and that's what i'm going to show you here right uh that app be, and also this is also deployed so if you look at this it says Cordrex Scout Streamlit app. So this means this app is also deployed on Streamlit Cloud. It's on free. And the source code is here on my GitHub repository. That's called Cordrex Scout. Let's first go through the app.py file here. So I'll show you. Okay. Uh, I'll show here what's happening. I'll just show you uh, on GitHub because this is all deployed. It's all working live. So if you look at here, we have this imports Streamlit. We are using request because that, that's going to help us with our webhook thingy. We are using JSON to parse the JSON. We are using Pandas to create the tabular view and import input output the IO. Now we have a set page config. So in this page config, we have made sure the layout is centered. That's why you see this like a container kind of a thingy. Now if you want a wide layout, you can set layout equals wide here. Okay. Now it has some CSS styling that you see like you know this uh, icons and you know this uh buttons color hovering and everything so this has a bit of custom css that you see and after that uh we are having a subheader that says scout your leads have columns you can see there are two columns here that we have divided this to take the input now this is really configurable because see when you work with lead generation tools you have to uh, find out your icp ideal customer profile that we call it right and then icp basically is derived from your own set of variables like let's say i want to find out all companies who are working in cybersecurity based out of united states having less than 1000 employees having less than 500 million in revenues and so on and so forth so there can be multiple variables or input parameters you know that you basically use to find out your icp and that's the tool that we have been trying to build here right so you can see right now a few naics code but you can get this code from internet. So if you come here, you can find out. And if you are somebody who is already working on, like, let's say in marketing, you know, right? You can see it says 
North American industry classification system. I have been already only, only targeting North American industries right now. So you can, you can see it says North American industry classification system. That's what it does here, right? Now you have few here. You can add more, okay, if you want. Uh, you know, we have this. We are doing this shipping and all because we only want the right hand side. We don't want to give code directly to this scraping pipeline. I will show you that in a bit. We'll go to N at end, don't worry. Okay. Uh, the region, the keyword input, we have some keyword. I was just adding the keyword into here, this input box. You can add multiple keywords. You can see I have searched for AI companies. So AI. And then it triggers our webhook. So if you look at here, it creates a payload. So this is our payload. Payload is nothing but all these inputs that, uh, you know, gets together and we have to send it to our NATN workflow. This is how our NATN workflow looks like currently. So we'll go there. I want you to wait for NATN. Don't directly jump into building automation workflow because you can't scale those things. It's good for POCs and all. So we'll go there. Now, if you look at here, there is the NATN workflow, uh, NATN URL. So I have a production webhook URL from NATN and I'll show you how you can get it also. And then I'm just using try accept to get the output and then show the results. Pretty straightforward. This code is available for you to consume. You go and take this code, use it uh, in a Cortex Scout and uh, try to enhance this. Now let's come back to NAT in here. Okay, so this is how my, you can see the successful execution over here. You can see the successful execution. We have something called receive scout inputs and then we have respond to webhook. So it takes scout input. Scout input is nothing, but this is the scout input here. You can see it's called it scout. Scout means you're scouting some companies, finding out or discovering. A very famous term in football where we say we are scouting talent, right? Or something like that. Okay. So you can see here we have received scout input. If you double click on this, you can find out these are the information that we are getting it, right? You can find out the body here. In the body, the payload. You can see here, right? Keywords, region, everything. So basically this is what it does with receive a scout input. And then in the webhook, it basically answers. It gives you the output. You can see it's a JSON format because that's how we have asked it, in, asked it to return in our prompt template. That's what it is. Now, if I go to editor here, right? This is how our, uh, this is an old output. I'll just clear the execution. Now, this is how currently it looks like, right? We have received scout input, set inputs. Now in set inputs, we have a bit of JS code and we only get these few things like just get the JSON from the payload, right? You can see it over here. So I have set inputs. So basically these are called set node. Okay, so these are set nodes that we call it. Everything is a node in NATN. So it's basically based on JavaScript and it follows the graph structure. So if you have studied graph, you will see node branches, so on and so forth, right? So this is basically all of these are nodes that you see. First one is receive scout input. Uh, and then we do a post request there and then set inputs. So you can see set inputs and then we are having an agent. Now this agent has a very good prompt, I will say. And you can, of course you can enhance this further. It says generate a single line search string. So what I'm doing here, if you talk about the architecture, let me show you that, okay, here. Uh, I'll just open my thingy here, download. Okay, double click this and then open this thing here. Now this is how it works, if you see. So you see this, it receives a scout input from a Streamlit app, which is nothing but a webhook trigger, right? That's what it does. So you send the payload, it gets all the information and then it format the user query, okay, uh, set inputs. The reason that we are doing it because with this AI agent, what we are trying to do here, generating a single line of search string, because see, Let's say I give all my config variables, input parameters, whatever you call it. Okay. Then it will not be feasible to directly copy and paste it into search engines, right? It will be really big. So I want to create a one line natural language instructions that can go and search on internet. So that's what this particular thing here does. If you see, it says generate a single line search string in the following format using the input provided. It takes, uh, it takes all this input and give this in this format. Companies with revenue under revenue max million, blah, 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 employee count and all these single natural language instructions, just like you do uh, query, right? And return only the final Google search query string, no explanation. Because I want to create a Google search query string. So this is, this has been used to do that. But this is really, really important. And if you look at this prompt structure also, the prompt, uh, the way I have written this prompt followed the open AI specification, you should give your context 
after your instructions and goal and everything. So if you see here, this is what I have done. Now, this is what it does here. Uh, you can see I have a system message that says you are a search query expert for lead generation. Very simple. Now, we are using something called Serper Dev. Okay, so I'm using Serper Dev here. So if you don't know, just go on serper.dev and slash playground. So you can see serper.dev and slash playground. Now, here you can, you know, if, if I just search this, let's say you want to search about AI anytime. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just put country, let's say India here. Uh, this all looks good, right? Let's just search about to see if we get anything here. Now, when I search AI anytime, you can find out AI anytime YouTube, you can find out AI anytime GitHub, you can find out our website, AI anytime.net, you can find out AI anytime LinkedIn, you can find out, uh, you know, a lot of other things. This is not us, these are the this legal company, anytime AI. Okay, but yeah, this is what it is. You get the blogs, you get a lot of information for us, right? So I'm using Serper Dev. Now Serper Dev takes query, it takes country, you can give locations, date range, languages, so on and so forth. So it's also where you can give a lot of input variables or parameters. Now I'm doing search here. You can also fetch images, videos, maps, reviews, etc. So I am using Serper and that's why I have created this here in a AI agent to give me a natural language query. And then if you double click on Serper Dev, you can see I have set up my, this is how it looks like. Don't worry, I'll give you this JSON so you can use it. Now, here you have a Serper auth that you can see it, it uses a post request. Uh, and it, it uses this particular URL endpoint for search and I need it in JSON. That's what it does. Now, once that is done, right? If I go back to my execution here and I'll show you uh, the success one, like we last one was succeeded. Uh, if you click on Serper Dev, you can find out this is how the query get created. If you look at the output from the previous node, it says companies with revenue under 750 million and employee count, blah, blah, blah. And it start giving you all these informations. Top 100 financial technology company of 2024. I would have searched about some financial thingy. You can see title, their link, their snippet, their positions and everything. So it gives you this JSON output. You know, you can see title, link, snippet, title, link, snippet and title link snippet and so on and so forth. So it gives you all this information. So we're using Serper. We create the natural language query. We get all the information using Serper there. Now when that is done, here I have extracted all the URLs. You can see in the next one, which is again a set. Guys, set are really important. Don't only listen to people who just say, okay, just use some already created node. Uh, that you can't customize stuff using that. So if you look at here, we have a lot of sets here. So you have one set, two sets, here also we're using a split URL, I'll show you that. Now in the extract URL, what we are doing, I don't need all the information from Serper Dev. I just want to get the URL. I want just extracting the URLs, the link from Serper Dev. And you can see all these URLs over here. And once that is done, I right now I have one batch size. See this batch size, you can keep it dynamic also, or you can also keep it like, let's say you want 10 companies. You want to just go through and scrap, excuse me, not 10 companies. Let's say if you want to, go through and scrap all these 10 URLs or multiple URLs and whatnot. Then you can also give the batch size as 10 just to save some API uh, consumptions or token cost on that. I have just kept it one for the demo, but you can increase this value to 10 also, let's say batch size. So what will happen? We'll go to Firecrawl. Let me bring up that image. So, so far you have understood, right? Web search. We have done Serper Dev web search here, you know, and then extract parse search links using extract URLs. And then once we have this URL, the URL is not of any use until we go into those URL and get all the information. So we basically crawl those URLs. So for search, web search, we are using Serper Dev. And for crawling the URLs, we are using Firecrawl. That's what we are doing. So we're combining the combination of these crazy tools like Serper Dev, like Firecrawls, AI agents and whatnot. So if you look at here, the Firecrawl, it basically scrapped the web pages. So if you come here on Firecrawl, you can see it's success true. You know, it takes this URL, gives you this markdown output. And of course, for this also, you need to create your know, authentications. So go on Firecrawl. This is the how Firecrawl looks like. If you see this Firecrawl here. Now on this Firecrawl, you can find out, you know, all your API keys over here. They give you 500 credits to work with. And you can see I have searched a website and got the information and you can take the code from here and build an HTTP uh, kind of an, uh, function to use it. Uh, via HTTP. 
So this is the output we get. Now after that, I have one more AI agent that I have given that you are, let's say, a B2B research assistant. Your task is to convert the following scrap scraped markdown content into a strict, strictly structured JSON object for each company. And it's a very structured prompt template that you can go and read it. And we are using OpenAI models for now. We are using GPT-40 mini for this workflow. You can feel free to use Grok4 or any other model you want to use. Okay. Now, not all the models are supported on N10, So you should see which one is the best and then use accordingly. Or then you have to use through HTTP endpoints, you know, in a basic LLM chain or something like that. Now in the respond to webhook, I have respond to webhook where we have all incoming items and that basically write it back to this uh, tool here that you see, it's a streamlit application. Now the question is, how did we get this? If you go to app.py, how do we get this uh, URL? Because this is the thing that we need, right? This, uh, uh, let me just go, this n and URL. So this will be nothing but your, come to the here, editor, Go to editor, go to re receive scout input. Yeah, you see test URL and production URL. You take production URL, okay? And you can of course change this. You can see I have changed this name to scout here. I call it scout leads. You can change that uh, path. So path is important. Make sure you keep a very unique path. And if you want to make it secure, you can also bring authentication. I don't have any authentication for the demo purpose. And response should be using respond to a hook node. That's how it should look like. You take this, uh, you know, and then deploy it. And make sure this is active. You have to make this active and this is saved. And then run it and then basically it works, right? You know, it will just show the executions like this. You can see these executions. I basically had Firecrawl API exceeded. That's why you see these errors. Yeah, and you can also make this a time trigger kind of a thing. Let's say you want to schedule something to send it on Telegram or sending on your CRMs like HubSpot or Apollo IO or wherever, you can also do that, right? Really cool guys, right? This is what it is, you know, it's a lead generation magnet. Uh, you can sell it to people. A lot of people are selling it in templates, you know, uh, it's not rocket science. Anybody can create it, to be honest. So go and use this, uh, try to enhance it. Let me know how did you enhance it better. Share your template. If you want to share in the comment, uh, you know, this can be your base template. You can take this and make it better, you know, and of course you can also bring a lot of MCP servers over here. You know, you can bring Tavela, you can bring SOAP API, and if you want to make it a bit better, and then you can also add, let's say, here I want to search here, let me just search. Let's say, I don't know if they have HubSpot. So you can see they have HubSpot. So you can use HubSpot also to write back the leads. So you can directly add your leads into HubSpot, which is the CRM tool, right? So I don't know if Apollo is there. So they don't have Apollo, but HubSpot is there. So you can use HubSpot to do that. Or you can also use an Airtable. Okay, let's say Airtable is there and HubSpot is there and whatnot. So it's a lead generation magnet. Okay, uh, for you, it's a scouting tool. Uh, looks really good, right? And it works, it's working. You can see it's deployed here, quadrixscout.stimly.app. This is the code, I'll give you the code. Go and try it out, use it, and let me know your thought uh, on this, right? And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you have any questions, thoughts, or feedbacks, let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channel, guys. And one more important thing. If you also want to learn, let's say, AI agent, then I have a learning roadmap uh, for you. You can see it's called Three Months Skill Builder Kit. It's, it's really good. Trust me, you know, it's I've created completely this on Notion. So if you are interested, go through this you know, AI agent three month skill builder kit that will help you make really good in agentic AI space. You know, you can learn a lot of things from design to deployment to ops also. That's what it is. So I'll give the link in description, check this out and share your feedbacks. Okay, that's all for this video. Share this video and the channel with your friends and to peer guys, please subscribe the channel and like and comment on this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.